Hello friends! In this video I will only briefly mention transits of planets in, the, in June 2020 and the position of the Sun and Moon in this month and I will mostly talk about the eclipses of the Sun and Moon which we expect and I will talk about the transit of the lunar nodes known in Indian astrology as Rahu and Ketu on the Gemini Sagittarius axis. I will not talk about individual signs of the zodiac. So in this video, I will not talk about that what will eclipses bring to each sign of the zodiac. Uh, I will talk about the messages that we get on the collective level in the context of the situation we all live in. Uh, the nodes of the moon will be on the mansion axis Sagittarius Gem Gemini axis from the May 6th, 2020 to January 18, 2022 and where the lunar nodes move, as you most probably know, in the, these signs eclipses occur. And now, in the summer of the 2020, we will have the last eclipses on the Cancer Capricorn axis and first eclipse on Gemini Sagittarius axis, axis and this first eclipse will be in Sagittarius sign. Later on in November 2020 we will have two eclipses, one in Gemini, another in Sagittarius and that they, they will continue their series in the year 2021 as well. Okay, so let's see the lunar activity in, in, in June. So what will happen? Full Moon will be on the 5th of June and this is partial lunar eclipse in Sagittarius. The New Moon will be on June 21st and this is the uh, eclipse of the Sun in Cancer. It is not the total, it's an annual eclipse. And then later on in July, on the 5th of July, also will happen an eclipse. It will be the eclipse of the Moon in Capricorn sign. And let's mention a few important transits in June. The Sun is in Gemini until the 21st. So it's a very, very Gemini-oriented energy this month. That's why we are mainly going to speak about Geminian energy, if I can say. And then Sun, after the 21st of June, Sun will be in Cancer and this will be big change, big shift of energies. You will notice this until the 21st and after that big changes will happen. And then also in June will happen the announced conjunction of Jupiter and Pluto. We talk about that in my video, Jupiter, conjunction of Jupiter and Pluto, conscious and fear. You can see it on the YouTube. This conjunction is, is happening for the second time this year and there is going to be another one in autumn. <clears throat> this one, the second conjunction of Jupiter and Pluto will happen between June 23rd until July 1st. And those planets will now be retrograde. There are also many other retrograde planets in Capricorn. Then Venus will be retrograde for almost entire month and Mercury will be, re will be retrograde from the June 18th. So a lot of retrograde planets say it's time to stop and to see what is happening to us. Uh, the work we started in the first months of the year can be completed now, but now we should not start anything radically new. It's time to end, not to begin, to complete something. Maybe to complete the relationship, contract, perhaps to sell something, but not really to buy new things. <clears throat> if you buy anything in June, <clears throat> check the details and buy only on reduced prices. It is possible that the value of real estate, gold and even of oil can change now in June, uh, as it is always with these retrograde planets. And always some people make money on this and some lose, not in, nothing new. So from the June 5th to the Ju July 5th, it is the time of the eclipse, which is a very special period of the year always. We know that the whole year 2020 is very special. 
This year we have eclipse season three times. It was in, in January, so now between June and July, and it will be again between November and December. Uh, the last eclipse, eclipses that are happening on the axis Cancer Capricorn will happen now in June, July, and will not happen again in, in this year. It will happen only next. It will appear for 18 years from now. And I talked about the meaning of those eclipses, so I, mean, I will not talk about that here in general. There are my videos on YouTube about Cancer Capricorn and Lunar Nodes Transit and Eclipses, so if you wish, you can find them there. But now a new story starts already. So even if the, the, the whole story of Cancer Capricorn is not exhausted, we are starting completely new story. And this is always happening. Heavenly stories intervene, like in the story of Scheherazade. And like that, there is no end, you know, always one starts and the other simply finishes, but the other started already and so on. <clears throat> so the latest, the latest eclipse on the Cancer Capricorn axis on June 21st and July 5th make it very clear that the old ruling structures of the world can no longer maintain their power in the same way as they did before through pyramids and they know that very well and they are now trying to change the way how they uh, rule people so they, they they know very well that they need to change these pyramidal structures to network structures it's only up to us shall we let them to do that or we understand that we need to go into the direction of the cancer or crab let's to say this sign which symbolizes human soul, natural and biological human life. It symbolizes care for a person, mother, humanity in general, and so on. So we should go into this direction. This is what Eclipse has said in previous season. But if we don't do that, we can easily be robotized. No problem for that. It is interesting how to stop that. But that, that can happen definitely can. So in the video about Saturn in Aquarius, I have that video on YouTube, I said something about that, how those ruling structures want to change to networks and what is the subject. Uh, I'm not going to repeat that now. So in the lives of individuals, these two eclipses in Cancer and Capricorn will, especially now at the end of their season, will have effect on people with the with the planet in with the planet in um, in Capricorn. Other planets in Capricorn will have effects on people who have planets in cardinal signs, and especially to those who have planets at the end of cardinal signs. Perhaps also to some of those who have uh, planets on the zero degree of cardinal signs. For them comes the time of deep maturation and abandonment of the old forms that have been overcome. Maybe they will be also the example and inspiration for many. That also applies for individuals and nations and states who are identifying themselves with the energy of cardinal signs. Something what is happening here is some sort of liberation from karmic experiences, both on individual and collective level. These planets in Capricorn are saying that. And it is only up to us to accept this and to become more conscious beings. Uh, and that means that there is a reason to be... Uh, there is no reason to be... Um, organized by others or there is no reason to be afraid of those who are leaving or who are on their way to leave us you know we can organize in a completely new way and we need to be conscious about that many things end now it's interesting that the second conjunction of jupiter and pluto occurs while both planets are retrograde as i mentioned but they are on the same degree as they were in april it is possible now that conscious 
of influential people and scientists will work more than in April, in spring, and then they will start talking about that what is really happening. We were mentioning them in my video of Conscious and Fear and in April and May videos. So people who are involved in modern science and who know what is happening should speak out, should speak loudly, not to be afraid, <clears throat> because if they are silent, that nothing good will happen, not to them, not to the world. Okay, so, but for us, for us can now be very interesting this first eclipse in Sagittarius. Uh, the nodes of the moon have been in new signs since May. North node Rahu is in Gemini and south node Ketu is in Sagittarius. To put it simply, in the next 18 months, Gemini people or those who have planets in Gemini sign will uh, gain something that will be made, maybe visible and tangible, perhaps something in material sphere. Gemini people are growing and embracing new challenges. On the other side, people with the planets in Sagittarius acquire some wisdom that is manifested maybe more in inner plane. They are mature, especially mature spiritually, but they maybe abandon their long-term plans because they realize that this is better for them to let things go than to make bad compromises. Some Sagittarius people will feel that their mission is over and that it is time to step back. Both Gemini and Sagittarius people now can make, make big decisions. Like this is the time to be for a wedding, divorce, relocating, having children, changing professions, and so on. You know, those things usually happen when nodes are on our axis, important axis. Uh, ascendant, descendant, or they are traveling over our sun or moon or things like that. <clears throat> this transit brings, brings also something different to each other, which I cannot speak about here, but maybe I will prepare the interpretation of the transit for each zodiac sign and put it on my website symbolicthinking.net. There I have many material in other languages, not that much in English, but I think I'll change that. <laughs> I said it many times. Uh, I have one older video about eclipses that I can recommend to you. The name is Eclipses and Our Spiritual Path. So in that video I explained why spiritual astrology is dealing with eclipses and what do they mean, especially in Indian tradition. They're important in this Indian tradition because Indians speak about, and Indian uh, spiritual science speaks about reincarnation. So for a spiritual person, eclipses have an extremely great significance because they symbolize time of connection between the universal and concrete. At the time of the eclipse, the sun and the moon meet, so two planes meet. One is the plane of eternal ideas and the being symbolized by the sun, and the other is the realm of historical plane symbolized by the moon, concrete historical plane that is symbolized with the moon. So when those two planes meet, uh, on the significant axis of our horoscope, particular horoscope, it means that one 18-year cycle is complete and the new one starts. And that is tightly connected with the idea of reincarnation. And then that is the time when God or universe, you can say it as you wish, is asking someone, are you maturing as you promised? You know, it's a very important time because the growth should be seen there. So now you are wondering what is the meaning and what are the messages of the eclipses and transits of nodes on the Gemini Sagittarius axis. So I will first say that what do those two signs represent? They both mean sport, learning, movement, teaching, school, travel, communication, intelligence, game, and so on. But each sign represents the same thing on a different level. So we will always say first what is Sagittarius and then Gemini. So 
Sagittarius is knowledge, Gemini information. Academic world, media. Intuition, reason. Optimism, rational approach. High level learning, courses and skills. Truth, manipulation. Long journeys, shorter journeys. Spiritual life through institutions, practical life. Pilgrimage, a trip. Foreign, domestic. Exploratory spirit. Nervous tension. Faith in God, doubt. And so on and so on. So I guess you understand what we are talking about. When this axis is active, the question arises how to acquire knowledge and information. So that's what we are going to talk about here. Many people think that they acquire knowledge through YouTube, for example. But that knowledge is superficial because that is the medium that offers information, not knowledge. And of course, it offers, offers false information, which is now a fact. So what is the situation in the field of information? Well, people talk lies to us in medias. Human reason is being manipulated because almost all medias are in the hands of those powerful ones who want to create completely new reality. And they are very good at doing that. And they are now using modern technology for that. Information and news are not in the line with the official narrative. If information and news are not in the line with the official nar narrative, <coughs> they are deleted from YouTube or Facebook or similar platforms. And many are saying, oh, how is it possible? Well, it is possible because those platforms do not belong to people. They are private. And of course, those who own them, they have a full right to remove everything, which is not in accord with their ideas and with their plans. Uh, many would say, but the internet should belong to all of us. Yes, but it does not belong. We live in capitalism, most, most of us. So those who love capitalism can now enjoy its full power. Because not that on the internet is in the hands of capitalists, but it is almost all water, almost air, almost all land, almost man, and more, almost everything except our souls. And they made even the attempt this spring to, um, to be, become owners of our souls as well. Okay, let's say also what are they teaching us in school and colleges, universities? Well, it is the same. They teach people what they choose to teach, and people even pay them for that. You know, in many, especially Western countries where education is extremely expensive, high education, they get a lot of money from families and students to give <coughs> to give to students some knowledge that they determine. Whoever wants something else, whoever dubs the official science, which is so special in the spring of the 2020, was ridiculed, removed, rejected, and so on. So now normal person wonders why <clears throat> in so-called democracy uh, are not allowed different sciences. Why should be only one official science that everyone has to accept? Why it cannot be that the medicine of frequency is not useful? Why Chinese medicine? Why uh, some modern alternative medicine? Why not? Uh, then what also goes together with this, because we speak about the Sagittarius Gemini axis, this is the question also of spiritual development, and this is also offered to people, and it's potentially determined. Uh, and many think, people think that this spiritual life is, can be defined by think positively. So everything will be fine if you just think positively, just sing and think positively. Let me remind you that this is also programmed. 
Of course, in many of my videos, I also motivate people to, th to think positively, to pray, to meditate. I motivate people to develop introspection and all of those things like many others. But I am not suggesting to people that they ignore the reason and, they, and not to have clear mind. I never said that, you know, because the reason is very important here. You know, not just think positive. Think positive is a good thing, but let's be reasonable. <clears throat> and that is exactly what energy of Gemini will teach us or should teach us. We need information and we need to include a common sense and make, make it very clear in which situation we are now as a humanity and as a collective. Only then we can use intuition and the energy of Sagittarius to make some superstructure. That combination is now necessary for many men to survive and to determine his place in today's world in order also to gain a clear picture of that what is happening. This is the message of the transit of lunar nodes on the Sagittarius Gemini axis. So first comes Gemini with reason and then Sagittarius with intuition. So now you are wondering how to gather information. Well, let's take the example. So for decades, somebody is talking about climate changing, but every normal person who has basic education knows that climate cannot change in 50 or 100 years. Uh, that's completely impossible. Man cannot do that. Man cannot change it. Man can destroy nature by the plastic, using plastic, throwing plastic everywhere, storing nuclear waste and things like that. But man cannot change climate by using some gases from the cars or the factories. But if you start to suspect this climate change story, and you write it somewhere on the internet, immediately there is going to appear a news that it is getting warmer and warmer on the Arctic or Antarctic. And then you say, oh, well, maybe I was wrong. And now you need to see what to do, you know? What did you learn? Now you need to merge those information. But it can be even much more complex. Listen to this. For example, you see that it is raining and it is cloudy every day and you have a feeling that the sun is somewhere close and it should rise up and it should be warm, but it is not happening. Clouds and clouds are happening. Every day the same story. You continue to hear on the news also, another thing, news are saying that soil has never been so dry. But you see, that trees and grass are greener and greener in your yard. This is now a more complicated task than the previous one, because a logical problem arises. How can be that trees are greener and greener, the ground is dry and dries up, and it's raining almost every day? Well, you are now in big dilemma. Intuition doesn't work either. Then I tell you through the June horoscope, so you know, I'm telling you, now, in nowadays it's raining to make the earth dry, not to make it wet. Now you are in shock, because reason is protesting from that what I'm saying, but intuition says that Tanya maybe said the truth, although it is not logical. It sounds like truth. So what are you going to do now? Now you're going to look for the information, I guess. Is it possible for someone to destroy the nature? That, why would someone want to destroy man and nature? Why would um, someone want to uh, create artificial clouds? So serious questions begin now. And you are on your way to reach the truth if you just continue. But... What is happening right now, a video appears on the internet in which an old meteorologist explained to you that this kind of weather is quite normal for your country as it was always in May 70 years ago. Also, it was raining 
and it was dry. And now you're totally confused and you can very easily give up of your research <coughs> because it's too much for you. Should I be... Um, Yes, so, but it's up to you. Yeah, I want to say, but it's up to you. You know, you you can keep continuing or not. You can believe to this what I'm see a presenting or you you will refuse it. It's only up to you. But it is interesting. We can add another thing, you know, not only that there are some artificial clouds who are doing that because of this and that reason, but there is another thing, you know, things are all connected. If, if there are many clouds that people are depressive and if people are depressive comes what? The pill. So you take the pill, someone takes the pill, this is against the depression. And when you get the pill against the depression, then what comes? Well, you start saying, oh yes, it's so important to think positively. You know? And that's the program, and the program goes and goes on. When I said you take, I don't mean you, you know, this is the way, only how I talk. Someone. So... When you learn how the system you live in works, you also learn how to decode it. I believe many of you know this, what I'm talking about. When you do that, then you have, let's say, an obligation to help others to understand the same thing as you understood. I, remained, I reminded you in April video uh, that there are different types of war. There is biological war or chemical or psychological informative war, network war. There are many wars in today's time. And I can tell you that we, astrologically speaking, yes, we are in war from the summer, some, summer approximately of the year 2020 when the Grand Cross appear on the sky. And uh, this war is continuing and it's stronger or less strong uh, still in the year, all of those years, and in the year 2020, and the information war is reality in this, our time. So if you want to get the right information, and that is now necessary for our survival, for your survival, I first, first suggest to stop watching TV and official news, and secondly, maybe to watch internet with, uh, carefully, to watch internet news and everything that is presented through internet carefully. Mainly things that appear on the internet are also created to create a new reality or new perception. And only occasionally people appear who seem to have been sent by God <laughs> or bring a little light to the media darkness and maybe they show you the way, you know. So... You should connect contradictory information, learn to listen your heart, and in that way, start learning how to discover the truth. Of course, be quick. <laughs> we don't have much time. The intuition that we are also mentioning here, and that is part of the Sagittarius sign, is important. The energy of Sagittarius is a very high-quality energy, <clears throat> It helps us to understand universal laws and that appears to us through sciences, all sciences, especially spiritual sciences. As the ruler of Sagittarius is Jupiter, called Guru in India, which is actually the archetype of the wise and patient teacher in us. However, nowadays, this energy of Sagittarius became quite profane, profane, I would say. Many aspects of life represented by, the, by Sagittarius will be overcome and better understood during these 18 months because, you know, Sagittarius energy is ridiculed in a way in today's time. So may, many can be, uh, there, there can be reforms of the official religions and churches, reforms of courts, high courts, high schools. The image of the so-called jet set will change drastically. Clergy is changing already. There are going to be many things. The immorality of Hollywood is already revealed very much. The issues of justice has been shaken in many countries of the world and will need to be defined again. <clears throat> it will be also a very big problem to restore the faith in science. Science belongs to Sagittarius also because it is manipulated badly. Uh, and that's why many people will return to astrology. But I will say here, it's good and bad. Why? Because astrology is not 
uh, exact science and it cannot be. Astrology is like a portrait. So it's, it's not a man, it's not the photo of a man, it's the portrait of the man. And that means it is some sort of interpretation of something, you know. So astrology can be inspiration for you to search for the truth, but it cannot give you the, the truth itself, you know. It's only very close to it and helps you to, um, uh, to inspire yourself to look for it, let's say. Uh, this spring, we will flow it with the information that will connect it with a certain disease. I'm not going to use the word. And it is still continuing. <clears throat> and many people are, medias are saying that will return, the disease will return in autumn. But many doctors and scientists say that it is not going to return because it is the end from the medical and scientific point of view. So what will you conclude with this? Does anyone want this disease to return in fall? Who and why? What can be achieved with this? Why would someone want the disease to come back? Are there such people in the world who want this? If yes, then search for the information and don't give up. I suggest that you look at that what are the leading leaders of the so-called deep state and leading personalities who were presented to us in through medias <coughs> this autumn and who treated humanity in this spring what they are accused of. The indictments indic in English against them are on the internet. They are in English and they are charged by the state of America. I saw that the court will start processing some of them already in June. Uh, the fact that the, official, the, the, that, that the official media do not speak about this, it doesn't mean that that does not exist. So I hope that Rahu in Germany will finally teach people that the truth is not on TV and in official medias, and I also hope that Cat in Sagittarius will bring justice to the world. We said that the internet is not ours. We said that it's theirs. Uh, and we said that Rahu in Germany can continue to drastically change our perception of the reality and bring false information. No problem. However, this change can move into different directions. It is possible that people continue to believe in official medias and because they are afraid now, for example, because they are afraid <coughs> and they accept this new vision, this new version of the world. But it is also possible that eclipses that are happening in 2020 and 2021 help people to see the real picture of the world. And it is, as always, it is only up to us what to do with the energy. We go this or that direction, we choose. We have said that in this, this axis is the axis of intelligence. <coughs> and in today's time, you noted that more and more people think of, uh, speak about artificial intelligence. And it's also uh, up to us to decide, is it inevitable to have it and use it? or can be avoided, or whether it must be necessarily against human humans or it can be useful for humans. Um, what is also interesting with this intelligence and information level? It is interesting that humans have inter in internal level of information, that's the level of DNA. There is genetic information and uh, those so-called rulers of the world maybe can have the idea, or they are having it already, to change this, this level of information, which would most probably complete desire, disaster. And maybe that's why they so much speak about the treatment that people should have with the injection, because that would change this level of information. 
So if the question is, do they want to change the information on the organic and biological level, we need to find the answer. If it is so, what to do? And if it's, they don't want it, then that's fine. You know, These are things that we need to, to think about, all of those that I mentioned here. Uh, I remind you that in some of my videos have said that the year 2020 is in a way repeating the year 2001 when September 11 happened. I talk about that in some videos like conscious and fear and conjunction of Saturn and Pluto and so on. Well, in the year 2020, conjunct, uh, Saturn and Pluto have conjunction. In the 20, 2001, they had opposition. So this is one strong energy. There are other things that are repeating. You can see my previous videos if you want to know what is repeating. But let me tell you also that there is another parallel. Because in the year 2000, from the fall 2001 until the whole year 2002, Rahu was in Gemini while Ketu was in Sagittarius, as it is now in the 2020 and 2021. And what happened uh, in, after September 11? It happened that new regulation of traveling appeared. And from that time, many airlines have started treating passengers and, as potential terrorists. And since then, travel, travel has no longer been a normal thing, but it was a harsh man for many of us. So you, you see now that in this spring, almost when nodes were ready to transit onto Gemini, Sagittarius axis, also traveling stopped. And we now see that it can be potentially uh, banned. It can, there can be many, there are already many uh, regulations. People cannot travel. Now is the fight how to travel, whether to travel or not. And if they don't stop doing those crazy things, traveling can be even uh, forbidden. In a way, it can be forbidden. I don't know for how long, but it's somewhere very close here. And what is also very interesting <laughs> when we speak about traveling, maybe you notice that there are more and more news in, in medias and on internet that UFOs are here, that there are these uh, UFOs, UFOs are flying everywhere. So people from uh, another planet are uh, aliens are watching us or going to visit us and so on. Let me tell you, I don't think that they're especially watching or that they have any plans with us, but I really believe that those who create the whole false reality are ready to use these stories of UFOs and aliens that they will attack us or things like that. So please rem keep that in mind also. So you wonder maybe now, when we are going to the end of this video, is this the only way how to use this given energy? Of course it is not. If the world is run by human people who love men and want men to develop, to be healthy, they would use modern technology and free energy that is abundant and everywhere around us. And they would allow us to travel, they would allow us to be free, we would have completely different cars and planes. Drones would be flying and doing, doing agricultural work for us. We would develop new and more spiritual communicational techniques. We would treat ourselves in a new way, learn about ourselves, learn about the power of our spirit and everything that, of course, that's possible with this axis. Instead of that, you have gloves, this, and quarantine, close in quarantine. Uh, well, from the June 5th to, Ju to July 5th, it's very mystical time, as we said, and as it is always bet between eclipses. And always between eclipses, new messages come from universe or from God, you can take it as you want. And those messages can be of the great importance. So that's why we are not making decisions before we wait for this to happen, because after that, things change. Sometimes eclipses change the situation for 180 degrees. So this can be very important time for many of us and some, 
parts of the world. If you are asking me, is it good to protest in this time? Yes, humans can protest, but they should keep their emotions in. You know, we should be very conscious, and yes, we can protest. Anyway, I wish you clear thought. I wish you strong intuition and faith. That's all for now in this video. You are free to schedule personal consultations with me if you wish. Everything that I offer is on my web pages, symbolicthinking.net. There you will see that I have consultancy based on different types of astrology, of feng shui, and that I also do theta healing, it's a method of energetic healing. Everything that I recommended, links will be under this video on YouTube. If you like the video, you like it, please subscribe to my channel and thank you, thank you very much for that. Until next time, I wish you to find the right information.